So let's say you have the KLX 250, or a similar bike, and you decided you want an upgrade. You're looking at the DRZ 400, you see it's reliable, it's cheap, and of course the power. The price to power ratio, you're getting quite the deal. And of course, you like the weight of the DRZ 400, or dual sports for that matter, because to be honest, they do best on the road. And you definitely want to keep its maintenance, and we all know the KTM 250, the Beta 350, and all those high performance dual sports do require more maintenance. But that's going to be out of the question because you want to keep the maintenance intervals and let's say you only plan on doing forest roads and ATV trails, not much of gnarly single track. Which by the way, it does not matter how heavy a bike is on these type of trails. I never understood why people say, my dual sport is too heavy, I need something lighter. And they only stick to forest service roads or ATV trails. Believe me, it is not. If I rode double track and forest roads all day, I probably would rather be on my DRC 400 versus my two stroke. <laughs> Woo! It is very slippery out here. I'm not gonna go that far today, guys. This is definitely very slick, man. Holy shit. So, what's up, everybody? Ride with Will here. And I got the DRZ on some single track with some high gearing. In Colorado, of course. I'm not the fastest. I kind of wanted to talk about the DRZ 400E and the DRZ 400S. They actually, they're actually uh, quite different. So without a doubt, the DRZ 400E and the S is obviously, uh, the DRZ 400E is a lot a lot more powerful it's quite a difference in power so the best way i can describe it is uh i borrowed my i borrowed my friend's uh DR drz 400 uh s model it had a big board kit and my drz 400e is completely stock and believe it or not like the drz 400e had more kick than the drz 400 s with the big board kit it's, it's pretty crazy that the drz 400e has uh more power it's like it's, it's snappier than the drz 400 s um with the big bore kit it was it was amazing now one of the key differences too is actually like comfort level uh, they uh change up the gearing so the two stroke is not too loud I'm riding with my friend, he's, he's a brand new rider, first time out on the street, on a dirt bike, anything. Um, so I'm going to say the DRZ 400D, like the shocks feel better. But I'm, now remember guys, I'm reviewing an older older model, DRZ 400D of 2001. And the DRZ 400S, that, the ones that I reviewed, they're like about no no less than 2010 2012 i haven't really i've never ridden a really brand new drz 400 s but i'm guessing it's exactly the same from what i've researched to me the drz the drz 400 d felt a lot more off-roady more snappier it felt like it it was meant to be an off-road machine and it was it had a lot more power than the drz 400 s and also like the DRZ 400S felt like the power when I was when I was giving it throttle, the power rolls on a little bit smoother. It's not as snappy. It's more linear. The DRZ 400E, it's pretty. It has pretty snappy power. Kind of like the Beta 350s and the 390s. Of course, the 390 and 350 produces a little bit more power, of course, and it's a lighter bike. Who's the DRZ 400E and who's the DRZ 400S for? I'm taking the DRZ 400S, and of course it's, it's a capable bike. It can ride anything, really. So I'm going to say the DRZ 400E. It's if you're primarily doing uh, roads like this, like you know, kind of gravelly, but you want to go a little bit more, venture out a little bit more to more aggressive roads. You do trail hopping, you know, 55, 60 miles an hour. I mean, that thing could also do 80, but the DRZ 400S is a lot more comfortable. Um, so right now we're going like for perfect example like we're going to penrose right now and we're going to go ahead and uh hit uh some rocky trails and stuff like that uh and i remember when i took my drz 400s on some rocky trails uh not mine but my friends it i don't know the suspension didn't feel 
suitable for that for that stuff like I was hitting like these rocks pretty hard and I didn't like it too much the feeling anyways let's say the time has come you found a DRZ 400 but you're torn between the E or the S model yes I'm gonna be quite honest here they're quite different bikes even though they are both labeled as DRZ 400 and in my opinion I think this is a great choice I believe the DRZ 400 are one of the most reliable thumpers out there because I have met many DRZ 400 owners with 30 to even 40,000 miles on a single top end with minimal issues now we all know the obvious the DRZ 400 E has bigger cabs, different carbs, and a plastic gas can. But let's fine tune things a bit. See, the DRZ 400 S usually weighs 20 to 30 pounds more versus the E. Think of it as a heavier, beefier frame, thicker metal, more added wiring harness, the speedometer, the mirrors, horns, and the whole nine yards. So what about the power? The E comes in at 38 horsepower, while the S was reporting a 32 to 33 horsepower, and in bike terms, yeah, that is quite the difference. The E also does not have a rear subframe, most likely saving in that weight. Now, I'm not gonna lie here, even though they are both DRZ 400s, if you plan on riding street a bit more, I'm gonna go with the DRZ 400 S on this one. But if you want more emphasis on the trails, want a little bit more of an aggressive ride, or plan to do some pretty gnarly single track, which by the way, I'm in Colorado. I've seen the DRZ 400E on some crazy top-notch single track do it like it's nothing. I'm gonna go with the E on this one. The road manners are actually pretty good, believe it or not. I've took the E down the highway, 70 miles an hour, no issues at all. Of course, it was geared a little higher, so it wasn't revving, but if you're more of an off-roader, you most likely are gonna have very short gear ratios. Probably a 1350 or maybe a 1348. 